Hi and welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's Dylan Jones here up in Anglesey, North Wales, Bragdy Bach. Um, I've not put anything up on my channel for a couple of weeks. I've been away in York sampling some fantastic Cascales um, and craft beers. It's, it's an amazing uh, city. I uh, wish we had anything uh, of that magnitude in the sense of cask ales and beers uh, around this area unfortunately we uh, we don't um, but aiming to work on that so um, I'd just like to take part really in the top five things um, that I would recommend if anybody was to start home brewing or um, a beginners um, in home brewing I've been home brewing for about five um, years now and uh, learnt a lot along the way um, quite passionate about it so um, if you follow me I'll move up to the brewery and uh, I'll show you a few things there thanks welcome to the brew shed come nursery yeah we'll see no more about that yeah so welcome to the brew shed um, just gonna take you through my top five um, top four here I need to take you back to the bar to show you um, the fifth so let's jump straight in affectionately known in brewing communities as the Bible homebrew beer by Greg Hughes an absolute must in my uh, opinion when I was thinking of moving on from malt extracts to all grain I was absolutely petrified um, didn't understand anything about it it was just so daunting um, looked on YouTube and everybody seems to flick through this book and says this is the book and it is an absolute beast of a book it has recipes simple recipes shows you how to use the recipe it shows you all the different styles of beer it takes you through how to brew different types of brewing different units of uh, of brewing you can have something as big as this or you can brew in a bucket and brew in different buckets this thing goes through absolutely everything if you get it grab it with both hands it's a compliments the brew day fantastically and i go back to it very often um it's, might be two three four weeks between brews i just need to brush up on a few things and uh yeah that's the book for me I do have several other books, specific books obviously on yeasts and um, how they work etc, more detail but that for me is the book that everybody needs to get hold of. So second item, how I keep my beer once it's been brewed, uh, I use like everybody else probably a couple of items. Uh, on a full brew day, I get about eight of these bottles. I use that bottle for keeping at home. As you can see, there's a few empty ones there, but these are the ones that I give to friends locally. But when I need to send something away, some something that's unbreakable and light, I use these. Um, I'm not bothered if I go and get these back. But then I definitely need back. You do save a lot of money um, on a capper. You don't have to have a capper and capping and um, etc. So that has never failed within three years of all grain brewing. Yeah, three or four years. Never failed me. Um, I never had to change any of the um, gaskets. And uh, yeah, it's fantastic. I think flip top, Grolsch type, that's what they call them. So yeah. Those are, so I get about a full keg, talking about kegs, 
I mean, the Cornelius keg. Uh, there's four here, obviously. Um, I've got another four on the bar. So um, I chop and change, and I have a stout at 4.7% there. That's right, it's a ring. Just got this spunding valve on top to make sure it uh, keeps its pressure at 10 psi and um, conditioning well, yeah. So those are the second items, how I keep my beer and how I offer some to my friends. So once I started doing the all grain brewing, um, there was one supplement that was an absolute game changer and basically what i have there does it for me it's water treatments um i sent off to my local water board uh, asked them what the qualities of um my water my tap water was um and she sent me some information that most homebrew was asked for um, and then I can identify what I need to add Epsom salt, calcium chloride, gypsum, um, Campton tablets to get into the chlorine is an absolute game changer with regards to mouthfeel um, etc so you really need to look into water treatments um, they have a massive effect on the beer's outcome and I would never ever do a beer without uh, playing around with the water treatments so there's my third item number four once you've done your brew once everything's gone through the machines and you got your water out and you put it into your fermenting vessel whatever it is a bucket or um, pressure barrels etc it's keeping that temperature at a constant so what I've done is made a couple of fermenting fridges, second hand fridges, controlled by an item there, which is called an ink bird. You can see the flashing lights there. The top number at eight degrees, that shows the temperature inside the fridge at the moment. My target is three degrees. So you can see a green light in the bottom right there shows that the fridge um, itself has come on and uh, if it needs warming up for any reason there's a heater in there so let's dive in and have a look at what's inside the fermenting fridge standard fridge larder fridge and um, i've got these films here that's what i um, put my beer in so what i've done is so this little probe here comes from the ink bird. I attach that onto my uh, fermenting vessel and it keeps um, uh, note of the temperature. So first thing I did was to get a proper checker plate shelf to hold this um, fermenting vessel which is quite heavy when full. So I added a 35, I think it's a 35 watt um, heater and um the plug runs up there's already a drain hole in there i think i just needed to drill a bit more um and, and the, the plug goes out there and as you can see in the back what i've also done is a couple of pc fans and um they are constantly on um when i switch it on and uh, it just makes sure that the ambient temperature is exactly the same everywhere in the larder fridge as we all know hot air rises and cold air dumps to the bottom but you need everywhere to be absolutely bang on and then that will keep uh, my beer at whatever temperature helps me to cold crash obviously um, but usually you know like a pale ale will be wanting to be at 20 degrees for 10 days or whatever and that will keep it constantly at 20 degrees plus or minus I think point two or three degrees so it is an absolute fantastic um, piece of kit so if ever you get the chance and have the space um, I've got a couple of these I might move on to more sophisticated things but that was the cheapest option I had um, and
I mean, it, the only option I knew about, to be honest with you, um, I think moving on to the glycol chiller and um, for uh, you know heated ferment heated and chilled fermenting vessels. That's um, a bit more expensive than what you see here, so um, might be the next step for me. Yeah, so yeah, there's my fourth item. So uh, I need to take you back the bar and show you what my um, fifth item uh, that I think is really required if you're into all grain um, not necessarily this um, piece of kit that I'm going to show you but there are several companies who do them but for me this is the one that I use this is the one that is um, bang on every time for me so yeah let's get back into the bar and um, I'll see you there Welcome back to the bar, everybody. So yeah, I need to show you the fifth and I think uh, one of the most important things um, when all grain brewing. Um, it's uh, a program that shows you how I brew, what how to brew or let's uh, swipe. And I use Brew Father. It has absolutely fantastic little unit so um, on the top left here it's got the recipes that I'm doing uh, the batches that I currently have um, any devices um, like a tilt hydrometer or whatever that's available my inventory how many fermentables I've got in stock uh, that tells me everything that I've got in stock on the fermentables just press the button there and hops are uh, the different hops I've got in stock so I know exactly what I've got um, it also tells me anything that I need to know about a style of beer so if I wanted to do an American IPA down the bottom here bang it on let me see American IPA there and there we go it tells me exactly what the ABV should be about the original gravity the aroma, appearance, everything about it. And it offers me some recipes that I can try. Um, and yeah, there's plenty of recipes. I think I pay £20 a year for this. This is an Amarillo Smash that I'm going to be doing soon. Um, as long as everything... So I put in an American-style pale ale. Everything has to be within these green units here. I've not finished doing it. As you can see, the EBCs are a bit down. But yeah, tells me all the hops, my water treatments, and my target water, my pH. So yeah, brew father. I think a lot of other people use beer smiths and what have you. But for me, brew father. And that's my top five i um enjoyed that and uh i'm hoping to brew quite soon so yeah it's something to look forward to next week now i'm off i think on thursday and i'll put in a, um, a brew day for this amarillo smash that i need to get going um i got another four or five friends doing their own amarillo smash as well and we'll uh, have a bit of sampling soon anyway thanks for watching hit subscribe and um we go at it again next thursday thanks for watching take care and have a good weekend